marriage in Islam is a very important thing. It is the first relationship that was ever established between men and women. It is the strongest covenant. The blessed contract of feelings combined with responsibilities. It is the contract of creating a cell or a family. For the Muslim community, the family is the cell or the unit from which the whole body is formed. And as compliance for the Muslim community is of paramount importance, the cell must reflect this fact. That is why in marriage, men and women share equal rights and responsibilities. With respect to their differences and natures, the relationship between men and women in marriage is designed to complete each other, not to compete with each other. And together, we will discover the responsibilities, rules, rights, the framework of everything in marriage, especially when it comes to women rights in marriage. Marriage that might be called dwelling in tranquility between a man and a woman. The relationship that Almighty God served by love and mercy. Watch this. And among his signs is this, that he created for you maids from among yourselves, that you may dwell in tranquility with them. And he has put affection and mercy between your hearts. Hi, my name is Ahmed. This is my wife, Lydia. Hi, we understand that you have a lot of questions about our married life as Muslims, especially my rights as a wife. And, and we'd like, like to invite, invite you to visit, visit us at home, home to answer them all. all. Welcome to our home. Uh, where should we start? I think we need to start by clarifying the framework of marriage in Islam. To be a good Muslim, one must do his best to apply God's regulations and follow the examples of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said, He is the most perfect Muslim whose disposition is best, and the best of you are those who behave best to their wives. So in every situation between a man and his wife, he should think, how would the Prophet react in such a situation? If God says in Quran that it is affection and mercy that should combine every husband and wife in every situation. So these should be the guidelines surrounding every situation between them. Reflecting on the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the relationship he had between himself and the wives, and the love and respect that were between them, it's amazing. Thinking of a man that teaches people that no amount that you spend on your family seeking God's reward, but he will be rewarded even if it's a simple bite of food lifted to the wife's mouth. Think of a relationship where the husband is rewarded by God for lifting a simple piece of food to the wife's mouth. <laughs> it's not a matter of a simple bite here. It's a system of treatment. It's teaching Muslims how small deeds of affection can be of great importance for the family. Not just affection, also fun and jokes. These tiny things that add life to the family. Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, used to say riddles and play jokes with his wife. Lady Aisha narrated the situation in which Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, once said, Come, I will race you. So she raced with him and she won. After she became heavier, he raced her and he won. So he laughed and said this one for that one. Love is the gift of life. When you bear all for someone you love, when you feel responsible for the one you love, and when you raise your kids with your beloved one. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, I see nothing better for lovers except for marriage. And when he was asked about the most beloved person in his life, he simply answered, Aisha, his wife. The righteous woman in Islam is seen as the pillar, the cornerstone, and the foundation of the Muslim family. They are seen as the greatest joy in a man's life. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that this world is of mere conveniences and the best comfort in this world is a righteous woman. How can a woman be a successful woman, honored and loved while true to her own femininity? How can she be the best comfort in this world? Hmm. Okay, so it's all about her choices. Let me explain it like this. My life is like a ship. Every girl's life is like a ship. 
and I'm in charge of driving this ship. But the moment I choose to hire a captain, firstly, I have to give him enough authority to do so. And secondly, and most importantly, I have to make sure he's qualified enough to drive the ship and not to drive me astray. Now, if he does drive me astray, well, that's another story. It is the right of every woman to choose her husband. I know some may think so, all women do so, but no, that is not true. Not just in all civilizations, but also it is still a fact in many cultural practices. But that is against Islam, as it is a religious must that woman chooses and accepts her husband, or else marriage does not exist. No one has the right to force a woman marrying someone she does not accept, but in the same time, she shouldn't ignore the advice and guidance of her parents when a potential suitor comes along, because they must have her best concerns at heart. Also, they have more experience of life and people, but she shouldn't forego her right because of her parents' wishes. Let me tell you a story. A smart lady named Al Khansa bin Khidam went to the Prophet, complaining about her father's wishes to marry her someone she doesn't accept. The Prophet, he didn't have a problem with that as it was common at that time. He told her, go and marry what your father has arranged for you. She said, I don't want to marry what my father has arranged for me. The Prophet said, then this marriage is invalid. Go and marry whomever you want to marry. At that point, she said, I will marry what my father has arranged for me. But I wanted women to know it's not about their fathers and their father wishes. It's about the women. They should marry what they want to marry. But according to which standards should she choose? Acceptance. That's the only condition of marriage in Islam. A righteous woman would never base her choice of a husband on minor details such as what he looks like, how much money he makes, or where he grew up. Instead, she would look at his religious commitment, his behaviour and general attitude. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that women are the best comfort in this life. He also said that if one comes to you with whom religion and attitude that you are satisfied with, then facilitate marriage to them. For if you do not do so, then mischief would become widespread on earth. Now, a Muslim woman must marry a Muslim man. But other than religious commitment, behaviour and attitude, the only other condition is acceptance. Now, acceptance is a very personal issue. And a woman can't be restricted to certain features in choosing a husband. For every woman would find something different that she likes or dislikes about a man. And a woman has a right on her husband that he gain her admiration and respect. Now let's talk about common rights. And they have rights similar over them to what is reasonable, but men have a degree over them. This first means that in Islam, in the marriage partners have a right to fair and reasonable company through the lifetime of the marriage. This can further be defined in the following points. Overlooking minor mistakes, sharing all in happiness and pain, advice for good obedience, keeping secrets and fulfilling needs and desires. So what is meant by the first point? Overlooking minor mistakes. Does it mean if I came home and my wife didn't smile at me, I should just forgive her? Let me tell you a story from the Prophet's life that explains what is meant by minor mistakes. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him once had his friends at his house, at Lady Aisha's house, and his other wife, Lady Umm Salama, sent them a dish. Lady Aisha felt jealous and broke the dish. Now I want you to imagine what would any man react in such a situation. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, calmly, he just started collecting the dish and told his friends, eat, your mother Aisha felt jealous. Now he didn't think of his image in front of the people or his friends or the dish or anything. He just thought beyond her anger. Why did she get angry? And he understood and respected her nature and jealousy. I wonder if I can be that good to my wife. I must test you on that. Sharing all in happiness and pain. 
Let me give you a better, a better example to explain this. After Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with the message of Islam, the Quraysh tribe, the most powerful tribe in Mecca, forced the Muslims into a small valley. They had no shelter. And they also enforced a trade embargo against the Muslims, so they had no food or water either. This is after 10 years of hardship from the hands of the Quraysh, including torture. Now Lady Khadijah, Prophet Muhammad's wife, came to the Quraysh tribe. And the Quraysh tribe said to her, we will give you your freedom if you relinquish your husband and you leave the people. She refused. She insisted on staying with the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the people within that valley, rather than walk away from them. Now, the other point is God obedience. It's a very important right and a very important responsibility on both husband and wife. God says, help you one another in righteousness and piety. Also, Prophet Muhammad peace upon him used to encourage and urge his companions, husbands and wives to support each other and to encourage each other on praying, not just the obligatory and uh, the fasting and the prayers, but also on the voluntarily prayers and fasting. And he used to encourage them to wake each other on the night to pray the late night prayers. One of the most terrible sins that a Muslim wife can commit is telling marital secrets. Their private affairs are to be kept completely respected, even from those closest to them. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, One of the worst people in the sight of God on the day of resurrection is a man who has intimate relation with his wife or a wife who has the same with her husband then one of them discloses that privacy to others Chastity plays a major role in Islam A good Muslim woman and a good Muslim wife would never commit such a sin as banning herself from her husband unless it's for a critical reason Exactly like a husband would never deny himself from his wife and engage in physical acts of worship such as fasting and praying and again refusing his wife's sexual rights. Let me tell you a story that happened during the Prophet's life. The story was narrated by Sir Man al Farsi, who went who went to visit his friend Abu Darda, may God be pleased with them. At his house, Abu Darda's house, he was greeted by his wife. Salman was surprised of her looks because she was unkept and she just didn't look that someone attending to herself. So he asked her, what's wrong? Why are you not attentive to your husband? She said, Abu Darda has no interest in this life. He spends his days fasting and his evenings praying. He was surprised. And later on when he saw Abu Darda, he saw him and he understood she was saying right things. And then the guy was fasting. And later on when it came in the evening, he was praying. He told him, Abu Darda, you need to give everyone his right. Your family has right on you. Your body has right on you. And of course, your God has right on you. Give everyone his due right. You don't need to fast all the days. Fast some and break the others. You don't need to pray all nights. Pray some and don't pray the others. Of course, I'm speaking about the voluntary prayers. So anyway, later on, when they went to pray at the mosque with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after the prayer, Abu Darda went to the Prophet and narrated him what happened between him and Salman. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Salman spoke the truth. After that incident, a rule was set. Another example is when Omar was ruling, a woman came to him complaining of her husband. He used to pray all night and fast all day, thus ignoring her sexual rights. Omar made a rule on the spot. He said he must attend to his wife's sexual rights at least once every four nights. <laughs> Many husbands act brutally during this act. They just go to fulfilling their desires, ignoring what women want. Well, men, we all have to agree on this particular issue. We are completely different than women. We can have what we want at every day and any time. These tiny things like holding hands and kisses and hugs, we just do them because our wife is demanding them from us. Well, ignoring these tiny things will turn the women off and will make them feel abused and not cared for. Also, they will not reach the same joy we are. So, God cared a lot for women's rights and also for them to feel the same way we feel. He said two words in Quran, 
وَقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ which simply means foreplay. Also, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, urged all the husbands to engage in foreplay by playing and kissing their wives. He said, don't go through it until she reaches the desire for it, so that you don't reach suffice before her. And when the man asking wondered, Prophet Muhammad looked at him and said, yes, you keep on kissing, poking and winking until she reaches where you are, then you can go on. Also, it was narrated in another situation that he said, if you meant your wife in a relation and you are done, don't rush her until she is satisfied. Such a related right would be how both the husband and the wife should look good for one another, and this includes how they smell. This is a rule for Muslims. When Omar was ruling, a woman came to him, luckily she had brought her husband with her, asking for a divorce. Omar understood how much she hated her husband. He was looking at him. He was totally unkept. So Omar ordered the husband to go and wash, clean his nails and cut his hair. When the husband came back, the wife didn't recognise him. Then it dawned on her. This is my husband? She withdrew her complaint against him. Omar turned to the man and said, Like this you have to make for them. They like you to beautify yourself for them, as you like them to beautify for you. Basically, look good for one another. The night has grown long, and its end is dark and black. I'm sleepless since I have with whom to play no lover. If there was not the Lord, whose throne is above the heavens, the sides of this bed would roll, shake and quiver. That sad piece of poetry was by a woman lamenting her husband's absence. Omar, the second ruler of Islam, overheard this when he was doing his nightly rounds. He approached the woman the next morning and asked her, what is the reason for your sad lamentations? And she told him, my husband is absent and has been for some time away on a military campaign. Omar reflected upon this, and he went to his daughter Hafsa and asked her, how long can a woman bear her husband's absence? She told him, six months. Omar made the decision that a husband would not be away from his wife for longer than six months. The point here is not the six months, it's just an approximate number. The point here is that wives' needs must be respected by law and ignoring them claiming it is an internal issue is completely wrong, as all laws and constitutions should be designed to reflect all the people's rights in every detail. And the husband may not refuse or deny his wife's legitimate request unless he has a valid excuse. rights in Islam are amazing. Why? Because they take into account the complexities of femininity. First, to marry her, a man must pay the dowry. Give the women whom you marry their dowry with a good heart. The dowry can be divided into two parts. The first part is given to the wife before the marriage, while the second part, which should be agreed upon before the marriage, will be delayed till after the marriage has taken place, at the time the husband and wife agree upon. It is a debt on the husband to his wife that usually is due by the wedding day. Either husbands or fathers are not allowed to take anything back from the dowry after fulfilling the marriage or if he decides to divorce her. As God states in Quran, and you have given one of them a huge sum as a dowry. Take not the least of it back. Would you take it wrongfully, without a right, and with manifest sin? And how can you take it back while you have entered with intimate relationship onto each other? And they have taken from you a firm and strong covenant. 
This verse indicates significantly the sacredness of the marriage vows and the intimacy of the marriage relationship as well as the rights of retaining the dowry gift in case of divorce. As God states in Quran, O oh, you who believe, you are forbidden to inherit women against their will, and you should not treat them with harshness, that you may take away part of the dowry you have given them, unless they commit open illegal sexual intercourse. Live with them honorably. If you dislike them, it may be that you dislike a thing, and Allah brings through it a great deal of good. To that extent, he cares about women and their respect from their husbands, even if they dislike them. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him emphasized on that when he said, a believer must not hate a believing woman, i.e. his wife. If he dislikes one of her characteristics, he will be pleased with another one. The rites of a wedding. In Islam, it's a celebration of the public announcement of the marriage, not just for the fun of it. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he heard of a quiet wedding that had taken place, said announce it, even if it's with a simple drum. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also said, in the same circumstances, Had you better set a meal? Housing is the right of the wife, that her husband prepares her a shelter. No matter how it looks like, but it should fit in accordance with his means and status. Lodge them where you dwell according to your means. Teaching wives is very important, especially about religion. Every husband must teach his wife, as God states in Quran. And enjoin the prayer on your family, and be patient in offering them. As a fact, this is not just the responsibility of a husband towards his wife, it is the responsibility of all towards all. As Prophet Muhammad peace upon him said, all of you are guardians and are responsible for your charges. So whoever is in responsibility should teach religion to the ones he or she are responsible for. If the wife is much knowledgeable, she would teach him, but out of generosity, as it is not obligatory on her. Now for the most important right, financial support. We, women, suffer much pain associated with pregnancy, delivery, breastfeeding, and what comes after that, sleepless nights. I'm sure all the mothers out there know what I'm talking about. Would I be asking too much if I insisted my husband take full financial responsibility for the family? I think not. In actual fact, this is a basic right of a Muslim wife upon her husband. Not only that, but if a woman chooses to work and chooses to contribute part of her income to the family, this is considered charity and she'll be rewarded by God accordingly. Also, husbands are not only required to take full financial responsibility of the family, they are also required to provide honourable and sufficient sustenance according to his means and status. Let the rich man spend according to his means, and the man whose resources are restricted let him spend according to what Allah has given him. Allah puts no burden on any person beyond what he has given him. Allah will grant after hardship, ease. Even if a sufficiently rich man refuses to spend on his family and the wife is suffering because of this, she is permitted to take a portion of his wealth and spend it on her and her children avoiding wastage and extravagance. Hind bint Utbah, wife of Abu Sufyan, came to the Prophet one day, peace be upon him, to complain about her husband, who was one of the richest men in Mecca. 
He is a miser, she said to him. He doesn't spend on me or my children. And the prophet, peace be upon him, said to her, Take whatever suffices you and your children, but stay within the proper bound. This is a very important point I wish to clarify here. In Islam, the financial identities are not mixed, meaning that the woman's money is her money and she's under no obligation to contribute to the family. Although, if she does, it's either by agreement or an act of charity on her behalf. However, the man's money, although he's in theory, in actual fact, is used to support the whole family and to service the family's needs. Household responsibilities are for the husband to carry. The man is the guardian of his own household. He is the shepherd of his flock and he will be asked and held accountable for all his responsibilities. It's their nature that makes them being able to carry these responsibilities. They don't have to carry the burdens of pregnancy, of menzies, of child rearing, of nursing, of delivery. That is why you have the responsibilities. Protection and preservation. That's my right upon him. Ladies, isn't that what we all ask of our spouses? Men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them excel the other and because they spend from their means. While polygamy is allowed in Islam, it comes with very harsh boundaries. Justice is not just a right here, it's a condition. Any man who is married to more than one wife must treat them all with justice, fairness and equality. A man must provide clothes, housing, sharing his time and intimacy, everything. And although a man is allowed to marry up till four wives, a woman has also the right not to be one of them. As a man before marrying another wife, he must get his first wife to inform And if she doesn't, then she is allowed at any time to get a divorce and keep all her rights. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly, then only one. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, He who has two wives and leans to one of them as opposed to the other, will come on the day of resurrection with one of his sides fallen. This demonstrates that the husband must show justice, fairness and equality amongst all of his wives. He is warned of a dire punishment of paralysis and deformity in the hereafter, just like he paralysed and deformed one of the rights of his wives in this world. You will never be able to do perfect justice between wives even if it is your ardent desire. So do not incline too much to one of them so as to leave the other hanging. And if you do justice and so all that is right and fear Allah by keeping away from all that is wrong, then Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. Companionship, care, and intimate relationships are things to learn from Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as one of the women's major rights. Good treatment is very important. A good Muslim was once asked by a father, to whom should I marry my daughter? He replied saying, to whom has God's conscience in his heart? So, if he loves her, he will treat her with generosity. And if he hates her, in case he hates her, he would never oppress her. Out of respect 
and one of the etiquettes of Muslim house. When the husbands arrive back home from long journeys, they should inform their wives. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if you traveled for a long time, don't surprise your wives by coming at night so that the unshaved to shave and the messy hair to be combed. And that was in the old days when informing coming back was such a big effort. So how about now when informing just requires a message or a simple call? If I'm required to look good for my husband, to smell good for my husband, to take care about my general appearance for him, the least he could do is tell me when he's coming home. And then when he does get home, well, that's another story. It is narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he would come home, he would find the family working, he would participate. Meaning that, if he found them washing, he would wash. If he found them eating, he would eat. If he found them playing, he would play. He didn't just come home, lay about and put all the burdens on the wife. This is supposedly the best example for husbands to follow. He doesn't do this. You know what? If a wife is not used to domestic services like cleaning, cooking and so on, the husband should bring her a mate. Huh, and you did this? Unless she agrees on not having one before the marriage. Unfortunately, this is true. The rights of a husband towards his wife are that she treats him well with obedience as long as he doesn't ask for anything against God's regulations. Not to fast voluntarily without his acceptance, of course, out of the obligatory fasting month of Ramadan. And she shouldn't let anyone who hates into their house without his acceptance. She should also preserve his money and try to cheer him and enter joy to the family. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to spend time with his family, showing them kindness, keeping them company, all before going to sleep and offering the night prayer. Lady Aisha, when she was asked, how did the Prophet, peace be upon him, spend time in the home? She replied, he would serve and assist his household. And when he heard the call to prayer, he would pray. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to mend his own clothes and shoes, and he used to assist his wives with the daily household chores. I hope you can do that part. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was always pleasant, kind, and caring to all. And he used to play, and he used to play, and say jokes to his family, all the time. Also, he taught his companions how to be lovely husbands at their homes, even when they were busy or stressed. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once said, Anything done without containing the remembrance of God is just amusement and play, except of four. And the first of them was to play and joke with one's wife. That was him at home, peace be upon him. And they were his manners, peace be upon him. And he is our greatest mentor, peace be upon him. Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a good example to follow for whoever has hope in Allah and the last day and remembers Allah much. We human beings are meant to mistake, and no one may ever expect the other one to be like an angel. That is why a husband and wife must always keep minor errors. But let's face the fact. Troubles happen and people fall into fights. That is why God Almighty states in Quran, advocates for fighting. As to those women on whose part you see ill conduct, admonish them, refuse to share their beds, and hit them. But if they obey you, Seek not against the means. Surely Allah is ever most high, most great. Admonishing is the first thing a husband must follow while having problems with his wife. Admonishing as a word includes calmness and wise advising. It is the first tool to be used. 
To highlight the causes of anger sparks, it is the most civilized and respectful conduct while in troubles. So the angers that grows ill has no room between them. Of course, this would work with some women, while with the others it won't. So the next step is when the husband turns his back towards his wife while sharing a bed, as sharing a bed in marriage is a must. Now if a female fails to recognize that this is a very harsh punishment, well she has a problem understanding civilized ways. Actually, both admonition and the act of ignoring wives in bed need a long time of application so that the one would say he applied them properly. And if the problem is still on, then the last thing is, hit them. After reading this verse, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him took a simple piece of suwak and slightly tapped the back of his hand saying hitting to be like this. The point here is not hitting, as Islam does not give license to husbands to use violence against their wives. It is of sending a simple message to the wife. Be careful, we are reaching an end. Lady Aisha, when she was asked about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, she said he never hit anyone in the household. Not a woman, not even a servant. And if a woman fears cruelty or desertion on her husband's part, there is no sin on them both if they make term of peace between themselves. And making peace is better. And human inner selves are swayed by greed. But if you do good and keep away from evil, verily Allah is ever well acquitted with what you do. If she is the one that has a problem with his attitude, then she would sit down with him and try and find a solution. Now if a solution can't be agreed upon, then arbitrators would need to be brought in. If you feel a divergence between them twain, appoint arbitrators, one from his family and the other from her family. If they both wish for peace, Allah will cause their reconciliation. Indeed, Allah is ever all-knower, well acquainted with all things traders must be chosen carefully and they have to have the best interest of the family at heart. What's the point if they come and start shouting also? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once had a fight with Lady Aisha, so they allowed Abu Bakr in as an arbitrator, who happened to be her father. Now, Abu Bakr lost his temper when he heard Lady Aisha shouting at the Prophet, peace be upon him. The wise husband stopped the arbitrator Abu Bakr and told him, we didn't call you for that. Abu Bakr left and then Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spoke to Lady Aisha and told her, you see, I kept him away from you. And then he kept on smoothing things with her. In many families we hear this sentence, divorce is something we never practice in our family. Don't you ever think of it. That was a cultural mentality for ages. And that was so cruel against many women who were forced by their families to live with unbearable husbands. That even turned into a mental block into the female's mentalities who preferred living with harsh husbands to bearing the community's comments on them as divorcees. And if they decide upon divorce, then Allah is all hearer. All nowhere. As a Muslim woman, I would say that divorce is the gift God Almighty supported us with. The right to divorce is equal to the right of freedom. How would anyone think of banning the other from having it? Divorce in Islam is a system that is designed to protect the rights and interests of both men and women, and it allows ample opportunity and time for reconciliation. But divorce is like marriage. One must go through this decently with civil behavior to assure both parties rights as God the most wise said in Quran divorce is two times then one may retain with goodness or let go with goodness if the husband is the one who decides to divorce he has to pay his wife all her financial rights which are the expenses of two years and she has the full right to stay home for extra three months and in case she is pregnant she can stay up till delivery O Prophet of Allah when you divorce women 
divorce them at the Ridda and count the Ridda after fear Allah your Lord and turn them not out of their homes nor shall they leave except in case they are guilty of some open illegal sexual intercourse and those are the set limits of Allah and whosoever transgress the set limits of Allah then indeed he has wronged himself you know not it may be that Allah will afterward bring some new thing to pass during these three months he has to treat her kindly and provide her with all her financial needs and he has no right to take back any of her money or golden gifts even if he was the provider O oh, you who believe, you are forbidden to inherit women against their will, and you should not treat them with harshness, that you may take away part of the dowry that you have given them, unless they commit open illegal sexual intercourse. Live with them honorably. If you dislike them, it may be that you dislike a thing, and Allah brings through it a great deal of good. Maybe you would wonder, why would she stay in marriage house for three extra months, right? I'll tell you why. This is not just because she needs to reorganize herself and get ready to move out or maybe to think of what mistakes she did to cause this loss, but also for him. He needs to rethink, to reconsider his mistake. Maybe he would change his mind. And after this period of time, both of them should have cooled down, thought enough and reached a final decision either to continue their life as a husband and wife or each would go on his way. The most important point for God in this stage is that whatever decision they make, they would go through each step within respectable and reasonable terms. And when you have divorced women and they have fulfilled the term of their prescribed periods, Either take them back on reasonable terms or set them free on reasonable terms. But do not take them back to hurt them, and whoever does that, then he has wronged himself. And treat not the verses of Allah as a jest, but remember Allah's favors on you and that which He has sent down to you of the book and wisdom whereby he instructs you and fear Allah and know that Allah is all aware of everything if she's the one who wants to end this marriage she would ask him for a divorce and in this case she gets all her financial rights if he refused she would take him off her life in a process called khula and in this case she would pay him back the dowry he had paid her in the beginning of marriage this process takes place in court, where she gets one announcement for divorce. Then if you fear they would not be able to keep the limits ordained by Allah, then there is no sin on either of them if she gives back. Khola is the right of women that balances the right of men to divorce. It's when things go wrong with women, especially with feelings. When she feels like she cannot love him anymore, when she fears committing a sin by disobeying him or opposing him when she feels she cannot fulfill his needs anymore. At the time of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, a lady called Jamila came to him complaining from her husband that she had nothing against him with regards to his religion and his behavior. But she feels like she cannot love him anymore. She fears that she cannot fulfill his needs and she fears committing the sin of opposing him or disobeying him. At that point, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, simply said, give him his garden back. That garden was the dowry he gave her in the beginning of the marriage. Listen to these words in Quran, and do not forget the graciousness between yourselves. God is urging the husband and wife to remember the good things between them. When? In peace? When they are deeply in love? No. These words are part of the divorce verses in Quran. Almighty God is so keen on respect of good memories and of acting properly between the husband and the wife, even during the peak of the troubles between them. My husband and I are of course not of the same sex, 
but we have equal rights according to our different needs. A woman's nature is much more softer, we're more delicate, more emotional than men, but we are strong. I bet all women would agree on this. This places us in a unique position as being protected, precious diamonds within our community. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave his last speech before his death. He spoke about many things, but he emphasised how to treat women. He said three times, take women into good account. Take women into good account. Take, Take women, women into, into good, good account. account.